Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to my top 10 characters from Fire Emblem Gaiden. This is just coming after the Let's Play ended, and I decided to make this list just like I did for the first Fire Emblem game, so I hope you guys enjoy. With that being said, let's get into the list now. Straighten up and fly right. Straighten up and fly right. At number 10 on the list, we have Matilda. Now one thing I wanted to mention is that I don't want to have any repeat characters from the previous list, which did have Kamu, so I couldn't include Zeke here. Which is kind of disappointing, because it's cool that you can play as him now, and he's a really good unit. But I found that Matilda is almost just as good as him stat-wise, and she's also a neat character. Those two in battle were quite the dynamic duo, although I don't think she was quite unique or interesting enough to be higher up on the list, so number 10 it is. Straighten up and fly right. Straighten up and fly right. At number 9, we have Rudolph. Look, I know I said in the last list I would try to avoid doing non-playable characters from that point forward, but, I mean, I had Kamu on the last list even though he wasn't playable. I think it's okay to do it here, because looking ahead, there are a lot of not-playable characters who I appreciate in later Fire Emblem games. King Rudolph is absolutely one of them. The whole story is essentially puppeteered by him to make Valentia a better place, even if he does seem like a villain for most of it. He's Alm's father, and he's the king of Regal, and he sets out a plot to make sure that the gods are destroyed so that Valentia may be a people. I don't know, that sort of thing didn't happen in the last Fire Emblem game, and it doesn't happen in later ones either. It, having the main villain mastermind an entire plot to make the world a better place. Straighten up and fly right. Straighten up and fly right. Number eight, we have Luthier. Now, some of you may be wondering why Luthier is on the list. He died and... He didn't really get to get his full potential throughout the Let's Play. But I don't know, it's just something about his character. You know, a lot of the portraits in this game look kind of pathetic. A lot of them look exactly the same as other characters, with just small changes to them. But Luthier's portrait has to be the best in the game. He just seems so commanding. The angle's unique. The, the, the attire is unique. Something about him's very striking, and for that, I had to put him on the list, even if he wasn't necessarily one of my best units, or one that lasted super long. Oh, I guess at this point I should have mentioned that there are spoilers for the Let's Play, uh... Well, yeah, spoilers for the Let's Play. Straighten up and fly right. Straighten up and fly right. Number seven on the list, we have May. Now, the game starts you out in Celica's playthrough with several different characters. We have Bowie, who has the best growth rates but starts out the weakest. Celica, who has medium growth rates but starts out medium, so, well, she's medium. And we have May, who has... Already great stats, she has the Thunder Spell, but she has the weakest growth rates, but I found that really doesn't hit her all that much. Unlike Celica, she can actually increase her class, so I think that her somewhat less good growth rates kind of are evened out in that sense. Straighten up and fly right. Straighten up and fly right. Number six, we have Jenny. Now, if you asked me to make this list back when I did my first playthrough, I would have put Silk really high up, maybe in this spot, maybe even higher. But unfortunately, Silk didn't do all that well this Let's Play. She got killed off-camera in a battle that I lost the screen recording of. And then when I had the option to bring her back, I decided it wasn't really worth it. We had other characters who could do more unique things. And we had Jenny, who had already leveled up quite a bit at that point. Now, Jenny surprised me quite a bit. Granted, she also died in the Let's Play eventually, but when she was there, she helped out quite a bit. Her healing spells were incredibly strong, she had some black magic, and I like how the healers in this game work, how they use their own health to heal you, and then they can get their health back through the drain spell. But probably her most broken and incredible spell was the one where she would create illusions. Straighten up and fly right. Straighten up and fly right. Ah, uh, number five on the list is Delphio. Talk about a great character. Incredible stats, she's got black magic. Kind of a neat character as well. And, uh, uh... Oh, she learned a spell that made it so she can't actually do any black magic for the rest of the game unless she gets low enough on health and she's a bit of a glass cannon so I don't really want her low on health uh eh, well she's probably deserving of the number five slot anyway that, that that seems right right straighten up and fly right straighten up and fly right number four on the list we have saber now this is probably the best character in Celica's army. I know I'm spoiling that a little for the rest of the list, but you guys know who some of my favorite characters in this game are, so. Saber was absolutely incredible, just all the way through. The fact that we were able to get him to be this, I don't even know the name of the class, but this weird ninja sword master kind of thing. He was just badass, he was strong, and he was there for quite a bit of Celica's journey. 
And unlike a lot of the other characters I've been mentioning previously, he actually lived through it all and was useful towards the end too. Straighten up and fly right. Straighten up and fly right. Another disappointing fact about not being able to do characters from the previous game is that I couldn't include Katria or Paula, even though they're really useful here, just like they were in the last game. So instead, I'm including the first Pegasus Knight you recruit in this game, Claire. And Claire is pretty decent in her own right. She's essentially the Sheeta of this game. She starts out pretty weak, but with the unique mobility a Pegasus Knight has. And by the end of the game, she's incredibly strong, incredibly fast, and just a unit you want to use at a lot of points. What especially helped in this game in particular is that Pegasus Knights seem to have a unique effect on undead enemies, which there are a lot of, especially in the last chapter. Straighten up and fly right. Straighten up and fly right. Number two, we have Lucas. Now, some of you may be surprised to see Lucas so high up on the list. Sure, he was great, but was he really the second best character in the game? Well, I think so. Lucas I managed to get classed all the way up, unlike Python, and granted, Forsyth was also all the way classed up, but unlike Lucas, uh, Forsyth didn't have the speed ring, which allowed Lucas to hit twice on almost every enemy, I'm fairly certain. But aside from all of the battling and the stats, Lucas is kind of a neat character. He comes to you at the beginning of the game and he offers you a position in the Deliverance. He essentially sets you on your path to recreating Valentia, and I think that's a really important aspect of the story. Straighten up and fly right. Straighten up and fly right. At number one, is anybody really surprised? We got Alm. I know it's a bit of a cop out since we had Martha at the top of the last list, so. Alm is at the top. This one now, we're just constantly putting the, the main characters at the top. But hey, Selic is kind of the main character of this game too, and I didn't even have her on the list. Partially because I didn't level her up all that much, I didn't find her all that useful in battle. What Alm does in this game is absolutely incredible. The fact that he was using the Thunder Sword the whole time really helped. It gave him a magical kind of attack even though he lost Tobin. By the end of the game, he was using the Falchion, which was incredibly strong, and a really neat kind of last weapon to get in the game, how it's the same one that he used in the previous game with Marth. And he finally defeats the evil King of Regel who invaded his homeland only to find that that was his father and now he's in charge. And it all culminates with him defeating Duma, which I think is kind of canon, right? He has to land the final blow because that whole cutscene happens where he jumps on top of him. I don't want to make too many uh, comparisons to characters in previous games, although I will say Alm probably is up there as one of my favorites in the whole Fire Emblem series. You know, at some point when I'm done with all these Let's Plays, I'm done with all these top 10 lists, I'm probably gonna do something like a top 100 on my favorite characters in the whole series, and maybe my opinions will change by then. But regardless, just after finishing Fire Emblem Gaiden, uh, the whole Let's Play, these are my thoughts on the characters. And I hope you guys enjoyed. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you for watching the Let's Play or this top 10 list. And have yourself a very good day.